Maybe it's time to say goodbye to veganism. This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world. Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. And so before we jump into today's topic, I just wanna give you guys some brief updates. Oh, first of all, you guys know that in just a couple days, in fact, tomorrow is the open dress rehearsal for the production of Hamlet that I'm doing here in Detroit. It's gonna be running this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at New Center Park. There are evening shows on Friday and Saturday. I believe the curtain time for those shows is 7.30. Uh, you probably wanna get there early because it's a free show. That means you can just show up at the park and find yourself a good spot and watch the show. And then there's a show on Sunday, it's a matinee. I believe that show is at two o'clock. I'll include a link in the description box below. But yeah, you know, if you're in the area, come and see me, you know, be spooky in Hamlet. So, um, uh, continuing on, uh, the FCC, uh, under, you know, our amazing President Donald Trump, is, um, sorry for the sarcasm, but, um, yeah, is, is, you know, thinking about or trying to, uh, dismantle to roll back uh, these t these Title II um, regulations uh, for the FCC um, for um, the internet, and so today is a mass day of action. And I don't know a lot about the details. I know that it's something that has been coming up. It's a struggle that's been going on for really the past ten years with the internet service providers really pushing to be able to have a lot more control over the content that people have access to. Really trying to you know get every penny that they can and. Uh, the you know government basically is trying to look at the internet as a public utility and so and you know I don't know maybe people agree that the internet should be seen as a public utility and maybe people think that it's something that should be seen as a you know a commodity um, but certainly without having access to the internet it severely limits an individual's ability to kind of survive in the world right so I don't know so um, if you are interested in learning more about this I'm going to include some information in the description box below but today today uh, it is July what 12th July 12th 2017 is a mass day of action that's at least in the United States and so um, there might be ways that you can get engaged or get involved or at least certainly spread the word from wherever you are in the world so yeah again information in the description box below so I have been um, some interesting things happening. First of all, guys, thanks, Juice, thanks for the little shout out. Um, actually, it was a big, kind of a big shout out in your last video talking about who shall remain nameless because I'm not gonna mention the name because it seems to be very upsetting to you. But I will say this um, I, you know, again, uh, I've been talking over the past week or so about shifting focus from, you know, looking at the deficiencies that we might have in our. YouTube community or our vegan community on YouTube um, and starting to shift the dialogue to one that begins to outline what a future, what, what is the future that we want to be a part of. And so I don't necessarily feel that, you know, I'm working towards a future where people are not allowed to, you know, speak. But I certainly am hopeful that we can have a future together on this planet where at least the truth um, is central. And by the truth, that is those things, by understanding them, we have a better grasp on the world that we live in. It increases our capacity to navigate the world that we live in to respond to the actualities, the concrete reality, the concrete material reality that we are experienced, uh, experiencing and confronted by every day of our lives and looking and trying to, you know, avoid as much as possible those falsehoods that make it less possible to deal with the world around us. I'm going to give an example like, um, you know, saying that, uh, you know, babies come from the stork is a distortion that might seem harmless, but if we want 
individuals to be able to navigate the world that they live in, we might want people as early as possible to understand at least that, you know, children come from you know, parents, you know, that there's a, you know, understanding the biological reality of, you know, childbirth and then, you know, maybe not get into, you know, we, we don't necessarily want to be showing, you know, kids pornography, but, you know, just slowly getting into more and more of the details and the complexities that will help an individual navigate the world if they're interested in, you know, in, in procreating, right? So, that, the, you know, the, that's, what, that's what I'm hopeful for. And so, not, um, just, I don't want to, don't lie, you know what I mean? Just don't lie, right? So we don't want to get, you know, have people be engaged in lying. And when it gets to the point where we are more focused on, you know, the, the, the fantasies that people want to spin and not nearly enough on the reality that we live in. And so, um, you know, whether or not a person is vegan uh, shouldn't matter as much as if that person is sharing the truth, right? So we don't want to, you know, silence people who are sharing their truth, but do we really want, you know, people who have um, who are seen as authority figures to be able to simply lie to the public without having to, you know, make some kind of a declaration about the, you know, the validity of the statements that they're making, or at least, you know, point people in the direction of what it is that they, you know, the, where, where they got their information, right? So I don't know. Um, I don't want this to be too ram rambly uh, a video today, but um, it is likely to be a little bit um, disturbing to some people because what I want to discuss is whether or not we... Uh, whether or not we want a future where the idea of veganism is even necessary. Uh, so uh, one of the people who's been responding uh, uh, to, one of the people responding to my last video was, I believe it is, and you guys have to forgive me, I'm gonna pull up some stuff here. Um, Gary High Fruit uh, Carburetor. Gary High Fruit Carburetor has made a number of videos, you know, l criticizing, you know, people who are perhaps recognized as, you know, leaders in the YouTube vegan community. I don't know, know necessarily that we have anyone who should necessarily be considered a leader, but just people who are more famous than others. But um, Gary has, you know, spoken out against uh, the folks like that and was commenting on my last video and saying that, you know, he really tries to share a critical perspective and that it seems not to be appreciated based on the number of people who watch his channel. And there were people who were kind of being critical of Gary saying that, you know, there's the the information is just too obscure for the average person so if i've never seen if i don't know anything about what's been happening in the you know youtube vegan community assuming that it's small enough that we all have a shared experience right there are certainly you know a handful of us that exist within a community and if you think about it it's actually kind of miraculous that we've all that we're all aware of each other right um but we shouldn't assume that because we all kind of are in on the joke that the rest of the world is concerned with that in any major way but um so so um uh gary high um gary i think it's high carburetor um uh sorry for butchering your name but it's a long complex name um but he's you know um they seem like a pretty nice person and i you know watch their videos from time to time i find them entertaining um you know there's a little bit of a tongue there's a little bit of tongue in cheek in them, um, but they can, can be a little bit sensational, but um, it seems to be done with the good of, you know, veganism, right? The, with the good of veganism. And um, Gary talks about something, uh, I believe he calls it um, uh, vegan like 3.0, but the idea is that we, we, we might want to start like reconsidering um, where we want this movement to go or even more like what is the world that it is that we want to see? What is the world we want to see and how do we shift our focus from you know looking at the scarcity what is missing in the vegan YouTube vegan community and start just simply building those things right start to create that world um, and so with that in mind I you know begin to ask myself the question 
you know, do we want to live in a world where, you know, the, the label vegan is even necessary, right? Or do we want to live in a world where it is simply commonly accepted that um, animals are sentient beings that are deserving of lives, they're part of the moral community, that we exist together on this planet as earthlings, you know, trying to, trying to live, trying to find joy. Um, and, you know, so if we were to imagine a future where that was indeed the case, I don't know that it would be so important for people to don the label vegan and I myself if you guys you know remember just you know a year and a half ago or so I was very hesitant to um you know label myself as a vegan because that word came you know with so much baggage with so much baggage and I don't want to make assumptions about anyone and I really want you guys to let me know what your thoughts are on this but um, why is it important that we have people who are kind of walking around with like the vegan t-shirts and Kearney, I know you're going to take this personally because you wear a Kearney V, um, Kearney who was, you know, my guest here uh, at Altspace uh, a couple of weeks ago, wears a vegan t-shirt pretty much every day wears a vegan t-shirt of some kind pretty much every day, which is wonderful for, the, for raising awareness, right? But is it that we want people to learn about veganism and understand what veganism is, or do we want a world where those principles are universally embraced? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, that's like what I would love to see and not just universally embraced about animals, but like this idea of exploitation was something that we sought to avoid as much as possible or practicable. So it wouldn't matter, um, you know, I wouldn't need to be a feminist, I wouldn't need to be an anti-racist, I wouldn't need to be any of these, I wouldn't need to be a part of a movement for the sake of, um, you know, social, ju social justice, right? And um, part of that, I, the, I, one of the things, uh, the justice that we'd want to see, the, the, we want to see a shift in is the acceptance of animals as part of the moral community, right? That is providing animals with the resources necessary for their own to empower themselves. Um, and if that sounds weird, um, you know, a bird being able to catch worms, a bird having the resources to build a nest, right? Animals being able to forage their food, those, that is access to resources that those animals need to thrive on the planet. And we deprive animals of these things when we come into spaces often. You know, when human beings show up, they want to, you know, mow everything down, cover it with concrete, have it completely clean, pristine, dust-free, controlled environments, right? The temperature exactly the way we want it to be, right? And so um, that's one thing is just this idea that, you know, vega, you know uh, animal rights is a social justice issue. <laughs> It's a social justice issue. It's embracing it. And the, I, I think it's an idea of where animals fit into our society. Or maybe we want to exclude animals from our society altogether, but still leave room for them. Whatever the case may be, it is, as far as I'm concerned, a social justice issue. Um, and you know, that's another thing. It's like, I don't want people to be, I don't want, to, I don't want people to have to be social justice warriors in the world, right? I want to live in a world where, you know, justice is a concern of everyone and this idea that everyone have equitable access to the resources that are needed to survive, right? Um, and, you know, just this trust in our, you know, fellow earthlings that people are going to, you know, take what they need. And when people, cross a line and begin to take too much, right? To exploit the resources in a way that would be seen as dangerous or as a threat to, you know, the rest of the earthlings, then we might have things, systems in place to, you know, kind of put, get that person back in check, right? And a lot of that, because we're social beings, could be um, just the pressure of, you know, a community on an individual, a community of, you know, loving, concerned, neighbors, friends, family, right? Um, people who are, you know, 
jointly concerned with the maintenance and the continuance of, of life on earth. So, yes, yeah, so do, I mean, like, do we want to, do we want, a, does, there, does there need to be a vegan 3.0 or do we want to begin to move away from the idea of being vegan as anything special and being, you know, and, and uh, avoiding the use of living beings as, you know, commodities, uh, the exploitation of living beings, um, just being something that is an, an idea of, that, that is embraced by, by the general public. So, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And I'm not sure if, um, you know, one of the issues always is, you know, how, do, how are these things enforced, right? Um, and I believe that that is where um, a lot of concern around a lot of issues um, resides in this idea that somehow one is going to be forced, coerced into doing something that they don't want to do or to doing something that they don't think of as fair. Um, even though we live in a world where people are, you know, forced in that position all the time, right? Um, and I know, I know I am, you know, find myself doing things that I don't necessarily understand the benefit for myself or necessarily even the benefit for the average person in my community. Um, I see benefits to a very limited number of people in terms of, you know, gain, financial gain for the most poor, um, uh, most part, and then control of resources um, uh, as another part. So, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about uh, any, of, any of that, but I do think it is something worth considering whether or not we truly want to be expanding what is known as the vegan movement or do we want to, I don't want to say have veganism, you know, be assimilated into the mainstream, but I think that's what I'm talking about. Do we want uh, the principles that are veganism to simply become the mainstream, making the label vegan unnecessary? Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna let it go at that. Um, I could go on and on and on, but um, not today. Again, check the description box for links to any of the things that I've talked about that if you're interested in having more information, I have links to those videos that I've referred to in this, a link to a Gary High carburetor. Anyway, all that said, oh, one last thing that I wanted to shout out. There was a question that was asked, oh, Sorsha uh, recently uploaded loaded a video um, talking about Target banning the, you know, the, um, Vegan products, you know, the, the company that makes uh, just, I think it's Hampton, oh, I can't think of what their name is, but um, the products of, uh, I'm going to actually pull up the video because maybe it's in there, but yeah, yeah, hold on a second. So let's see what the information is there. Um, Hampton Creek, yeah, it's Hampton Creek. So Target um, took all of the Hampton Creek products off of their shelves due to receiving anonymous allegations. Um, so yeah, so uh, Sorsha made a video about that. Sorsha, you went on for a long time about it. I think I got the point in the first like two minutes of the video, but thank you Sorsha for, um, for that piece of information. I had been really nice to Target. <laughs> you know, I've been really nice to Target and I just really need to come to, I was in an argument with Ethan and I won't admit it to his face, but I will admit it here in this thing. As a vegan, um, Ethan was saying that, you know, people are like down on Walmart, but seem to find Target okay. And um, for no, you know, assuming that Target is somehow better to their employees, better to the environment, has less of an impact on, you know, local businesses. And I, and I tend to think that maybe Target um, may have less impact on, you know, local businesses because they don't try to be like everything. But then again, they kind of do. And with this last move, this last pretty shitty move, I, you know, yeah, I'm not really feeling, I'm not really feeling Target these days. So I may be uh, ceasing to shop at Target. Um, in fact, I really need to be stopping the shopping. Um, started watching that film Minimalism, and so I might be getting into that film mi Minimalism and trying to see if I can embrace some of those principles. Even though you know I'm you know kind of operating out of a huge space, I'd really like my footprint in the space to be as small as possible. 
And then a lot of you, it seems, were interested in me hunting down Camille Paglia to see if I could get, you know, some kind of a little interview or something. Maybe I'll go to Philly and, you know, see if I can, you know, spend some time in Dr. Paglia's office. We'll see. Um, that would be fun. And then there was one person who asked about uh, the layout of the house. They were noticing that there's a table, this table that's right here, and they wondered if it looked out on the vineyard. And yes, it does look out on the vineyard. And uh, that table came from you know a used furniture store. And the day it arrived, um, I picked, a, the table was delivered while the students from Purchase were still here. And the day it arrived, that day I walked in and found one of the students doing their journaling having a cup of tea and looking out the window. So yes, that table um, definitely uh, served the purpose that I had hoped it would take. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about today. So yeah, leaving you all with the question, do we want a future where veganism is even necessary or do we like the label? Uh, how do people feel about a future where, where um, no one considers themselves vegan, but the principles of veganism are universally embraced. Yeah, let me know what you think about that. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.